Okay. At least you get a little tour of Flow Hub. So that's not the button I want. And we are not on low cost. Yes, but I can do this first. That's a good point. Okay, now I have that. <coughs> yes. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> and now, where is the shit? <laughs> okay, we are connected. So, uh, yes. that's a good start. Okay, you need help on there. Things here look all right. Am I, is my sound okay? Yes, so about the setup, um, since I'm doing demo, there is some IoT devices here, just a uh, uh, dev board, ESP8266, uh, another one, Node MCU, so same chip. They're just connected to battery, and they're all on Wi-Fi. It's using my uh, phone as a hotspot, kind of uh, bridging it, because this is actually a nice portable way, then you don't have to like reconfigure your devices, just uh, it works for a kind of personal work. And um, we're using MQTT to communicate the uh, broker uh, in MQTT, which uh, those things are talking to is running on my laptop. Normally that would be your IoT gateway, could be a Raspberry Pi, could be a router, uh, whatever. Uh, and then on my kind of developer machine, in this case is, is this one, uh, which is very <laughs> unfamiliar to me with the Acerti keyboard and, uh, and stuff, uh, we have kind of our, our, our development environment. So this is actually a little bit good that we have to do this switcheroo because it's showing now that I'm on a different device do, uh, doing the UI parts than the actual runtime. This is a normal case when you're in the deployment, you're not going to have uh, a, a full IDE and this kind of stuff uh, on your Raspberry Pi or whatever. You might not have a screen and, and so on. So I'm com connected over uh, uh, WebSocket to that stuff. Uh, okay. So I hope we will have some uh, uh, devices. Yes. Uh, we have, uh, I have two, two devices and they just have a couple of different uh, things. I have one with actually the relay on it, that's the red board right here. And it actually has a LED also on the relay. Uh, uh, so that's, it's called LED the input. And uh, because we're communicating over MQTT, I need to configure this. To have a known uh, name, relay, and this one is buttons, like that. And uh, right now the devices are not doing anything; they're just sitting there. They're publishing. I can see here, and I can see that they are saying hello. I'm here, and, and uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, yes, so. What should be possible now is I can, for instance, take the button here and uh, connect it to the relay itself. So now that I'm clicking the button, this thing is actually kind of talking to itself over MQTT. Okay, there's something. Maybe you, need, maybe you have a light which is actually hard, hard wire, you know? Okay. Uh, however, maybe not the most uh, generally useful thing. So uh, maybe our uh, uh, device is uh, somewhere else, you know? So uh, now, and I just have LED to show, now it's connected to, to this thing. So we can uh, live rewire the system um, to, in order to, to uh, change connections. Uh, this could be like setting up the initial thing, or it could be like just changing how you like things. Like, I don't really like that I have to uh, go to that device to trigger that thing or this kind of uh, things. Uh, uh, so that's uh, changing connections. We can also add uh, more components. Um, so uh, classical stuff that happens now all the time is incompatibility of devices. And then you need like, okay, take this JSON thing and take us message and then make it work. Or you, you want to have some functionality. A lot of the uh, ideas which I will go through um, is about like 
avoid fixed functionality in your system. Build devices that are do something, sensors and actuators, and then build the system together in a flexible way. For instance, using a tool like this, uh, using Flow Um Because this has a lot of benefits. So for instance, uh, I think we have a really simple component. Actually, let's add it from, from, from uh, OK, I'm not going to live code. I had a sample code, but it's on that machine. So it's really, but I actually have the component. So normally, you could go here, create a new component, and write your code. Uh, I'll, I can sh I'll show you, if I, even if I'm not using that one. Invert, we'll just call it two. We support a bunch of different uh, languages. And it's really easy to add more uh, with message flow. Uh, CoffeeScript and JavaScript are uh, good. Also C++, Python, um, anything like that. So it's nice to, that's the wrong key. Uh, and then you get a nice little uh, editor where you can do that. And when you create that component, actually, we live, we can instantiate it. So I have done this before. And I have, uh, ooh. OK, it's not showing here. I hope it still works. So uh, for instance, I have this uh, invert component. Uh, just plug it in between here. And now the light is on when it's, I'm not pressing it and, and off when I am pressing it. So this is just super simple. I mean, of course, you can have as complicated stuff as you want. You have a full programming language or many programming languages, Python, JavaScript, and so on. Uh, so this is also nice because it always happens. Even if you have the uh, this system that's kind of designed to work together, there's always a little, mm, it doesn't really. Um, and that's all like a, it's a very pragmatic solution to this, in, like this incompatibility. We don't try to make a, uh, uh, the universal way of doing things, like just, OK, th that stuff doesn't work this way, this stuff works this way. Build something to, to plug it together. And we have some testing tools, also automated testing, uh, that uses the um, uh, message queues. So you can kind of, you have, can have good uh, uh, faith that it actually will work. Uh, let's see for time. OK, I'll do a little bit more demo. Uh, let's add, I have this timer component. I have a toggle component. And uh, in general, in message flow, you, the participant shouldn't do much when they are. Uh, so not, now nothing happens. But if I specify an interval, 100 milliseconds, now we have this uh, blinking light, whatever. So that's actually a stateful component. You know, it remembers, OK, we were off before. Now we need to go on and so on. And you can do this uh, as well. So this could be, it could be complicated stuff like talking to a database, finding uh, what this uh, message should mean, and doing it live, talking to the internet, and, and uh, or some service, and so on. Um, but yeah. And also, this shows that we can change the configuration data, right? So um, for instance, when you're working with uh, user experience, it's sometimes hard to predict what's the right values of things. You know, like uh, uh, maybe uh, one, you know, this is kind of one second showing activity, but not stressing uh, uh, people. Um, so you can kind of explore your way to find out. Maybe 1,200 is the right word. It's just showing that you can do live uh, things there. And uh, yes, that's it for demo. And since I've been so demo focused, <laughs> My slides are not even up. Um, yes, and we are, as I said, we are talking, uh, it's uh, all MQTT. I will, oh, I am on the wrong uh, network, wrong internet. <laughs> Happens all the time. I tried you one. <laughs> yes, and uh, so uh, this is where you find the source code for message flow. We also have a new website now, messageflow.org. I put my slides here, because that's nice. I hope there is a PDF reader. Chrome is my PDF reader, OK. So uh, yes, so the, the typical way you do MQTT communication, you, you, you're sending on some topics. And they have names, and depending on the, like both on the send and receive. And then you, your system can't do anything else. So instead, what we do, so you have a system that can can only do basically one thing, and it's it's you can't see these these what how is it working where is it sending stuff it's all digged into the code using Flub you can see it easily, and how it works we send um, so we uh, for instance we send 
the button sends on button something, not directly to the motor or the light, because this way it, you, it kind of has its own namespace. And then something else, like Flow Hub, or you can use a hard-coded list of queue mappings or whatever, uh, connects them together. And this gives you the flexibility to reorganize it. And uh, with Message Flow, you can do it live, which is nice. Um, and uh, in addition, we send a discovery message. So we send information, each device sending information, how uh, and describing itself. Like, uh, what is the uh, uh, component? This is kind of like, so I can have many of the same components. They, each, they are each in a different role. So one can be a, a light button, one another is a motor button, one is a, so this is reflecting their, their purpose. But it's not hard coded, so you can still like rewire. And then it says something about uh, its ports. So like this is a kind of data flow, uh, flow-based programming model for how to do the queues. So the MQTT queue is actually this thing here. So that's how it, on the wire it's uh, communicating. And then, yeah, you can use this uh, little FPP DSL to connect things together. Here I'm connecting the pressed state of a imaginary button to a start of a motor. And the motor could say when it's running, there's a uh, say to another LED, uh, lamp that is, makes it red, the warning. So that you know that's potentially dangerous and so on. You can use this tool to set it up. So that's kind of how you would, uh, like, that's without the live, the live and visual programming part. And, uh, but what about devices that don't, talk message flow. Uh, as long as you talk MQTT or AMQP, which we also support, uh, you can have, you can kind of declare this information about how it, how it uh, works um, separately in a, in a YAML file. And then you can have this uh, tool send it on behalf of the device. So this is a way to have your existing MQTT uh, things appear uh, and be connectable in this way. Uh, of course, sometimes they are hard coded. They're, they're, they're sending, <laughs> then there's not much you can do. Uh, then there's an incentive to maybe change that code and, and uh, make it. And yeah, as I said, we can do live programming, or as I demonstrated. <coughs> then you run uh, message flow with uh, your uh, initial graph. So, like, what's the basic stuff? You open your browser. As I said, you, I, this computer I've never touched before. If you just load the browser and connect to the right uh, IP address, then you can do it. The nice thing is, all the connection information is uh, in, a URL, in a URL. So, we're saying, okay, please open the IDE app for a while. And please, IDE, connect on WebSocket to this address. So, you can actually have a QR code or uh, NFC token where you go bloop and it comes up uh, directly on your tablet, your laptop, or whatever. So uh, that's nice. Uh, of course, th you just need to send this discovery message to make stuff work with message flow or in talk MQTT. But there are also these convenience libraries which you can use, which make it nice and easy. We have uh, JavaScript and Node.js, uh, NoFlow, it's another visual programming environment, um, a visual programming runtime that Flow can use. Uh, C++, Python, Arduino. I'm using the Arduino here. I used Python in the uh, example, and one other example was JavaScript. Uh, we have a Rust one, which uh, currently only supports MQP. So that's, um, yes. So for uh, the current status, is that the programming model, we've actually been using this a lot, like how this is uh, set up together in, uh, uh, on backend services for cloud systems. And there we're using uh, AMQP. And that's really well tested. We're running millions of jobs uh, every week uh, through the system, and it works really well. Uh, we're primarily using the JavaScript and NoFlow libraries. That's really uh, battle tested and works well. MQTT, we haven't used so much uh, yet, so it's a little bit uh, 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 rougher. We have uh, some uh, small deployments in hackerspaces, so uh, of MQTT with message flow, in Seabase in Berlin, and uh, Bitraf in Oslo. Um, so like we know it, it you can you can use it for stuff. Uh, live programming, like a demo now, is not so much tested, but it's also not part of the, you know, the the. the core production system. We stay out of the, the um, uh, there as much as we can. So it, it's not, maybe you have, the developer doesn't have the best experience, but the system works. Um, MQTT SSL support, the message flow is actually not tested. This is uh, one thing that might uh, uh, cause you to want to wait a little bit to do a real deployment, because you need uh, SSL to securely do authentication on Mosquito, for instance. Uh, yes, uh, future. So right now on MQTT, uh, Mosquito, which is the most uh, common uh, uh, broker, and in the protocol, it's not 
no routing is specified. So when we use uh, Rabbit on MQP, we actually ask Rabbit to say, okay, connect this thing to that thing. So we are staying out of the, um, the kind of core communication path. However, on, on, uh, on MQTT, there is no standard for this. So we have our own, it's actually running in our own process. And we would like to, to kind of get rid of that. Um, so we want to support uh, M, uh, uh, RabbitMQ routing, also MQTT, because they support that. Um, and then the code that we currently have will probably separate out as, a, as its own uh, kind of uh, battle, uh, like really well-tested uh, router for MQTT. So that if you run Mosquito, which doesn't have this functionality, you can plug this in and you can uh, you can it can work. Um, yeah, there are some changes we want to do more with the, how we uh, visualize data in Flub, so you can kind of see the data flowing through. There's a PR for this open right now, uh, which would give you like a, at least a text stream of messages coming through, which is uh, very nice, because a lot of times, you know, documentation is slightly wrong. It says it sends on this format, but you know, actually it's not, and it's really nice to, <laughs> to be able to see that directly. And then, but one of the big things we want to do is we want to take this programming model, which, we, which, which works now for connecting stuff together. We actually have a, um, microcontroller uh, runtime which you can program live like uh, the, the, the logic internally on the device and we'd like to expose this so you can have this big network of this device talks to that device but it's like oh how does that device actually work or it has a bug whatever you go in to that node and then you see the network inside and you can change it uh, so that's the big uh, big things and also we have a couple of tiny changes we would like to do to the protocol before we call it message for 1.0 because uh, that would be a would be a stability point so we would like to get some minor fixes actually just renaming the queue and some small conventions uh, so yes that's it questions uh, just what's the front end of flow up there what's that's uh, repeat the question. Yes, uh, what's the front end? That's uh, FlowHub. Uh, it's an uh, open source uh, ID. It's running completely in the browser. So uh, uh, that's why it works when I'm not on the internet and when this kind of stuff. And it's also offline capable. So uh, uh, you find that uh, that's under FlowHub slash NoFlowUI is actually called. It should be renamed, but um, you find that there. And you can use that to target other things, the microcontrollers. Uh, you can do sound programming with it, uh, image pro processing with it, and stuff like this. So that's, uh, yeah. Cool. Do you support MicroPython on the ESP, or how do you? Uh, no. Uh, well, we, it's like if, so, if you would send that discovery message, that little JSON thing. Could you repeat the question? Sorry, if we support MicroPython on the ESP. Uh, we don't, but if you would uh, use the existing MQTT support in MicroPython and just send that JSON, it will work. And yes, you said uh, that uh, communication encryption has not been tested, SSL has not been tested. Yes. Has it been implemented and not tested, or is it yeah. something that... Uh, we are, the question was, uh, SSL has not been uh, uh, tested. Is it mm -hmm. implemented and not tested, or like not being started? Yeah. Uh, we are using uh, existing libraries for MQTT support. So oh. they have SSL support, both in Node.js and Python and so on. So we're using Paho and Python and so on. Yeah, so okay. like, base stuff is there, but it could be that we yeah, are in small conventions trip something later up. Okay. So I think so it's literally like a couple of hours on each place making sure it works and documenting. Thanks. Yeah. Other questions? Okay. Again? <laughs> have you looked at, uh, on the SSL topic, have you looked at Curve, uh, Curve 255.19, which is uh, way slower and way lighter than, uh, than SSL. I mean, on the ESP, there is no support for uh, uh, HTTPS. Hmm. As I try, and uh, but there are libraries for Curve 255.19, yep. uh, which can provide encryption in a lighter way, especially for those light CPU yep. uh, devices. So <coughs> on uh, Zero MQ, for example, uh, they use Curve and Tiny uh, Tweet and SAL by default, which makes uh, yeah Tweet and SAL for the libraries. I've seen some for Arduino. Yep. So, uh, if you want encryption, I don't. I think. Uh, either you, you try to get the, uh, the job done by external libraries, or you might look at uh, Curve. To yeah, so the, the comment is uh, have you looked at uh, Curve as an alternative to SSL encryption? Uh, for communicating on MQTT, we're kind of relying on what the broker supports, mm -hmm. <laughs> otherwise they can't talk together. And as far as I know, Mosquito only supports uh, TLS uh, 1.0. Uh, so Probably that will be limitation. There's also the end-to-end -end encryption, which is also, I think, uh, quite interesting. It's a separate topic. Uh, that is very nice because then you can send through an untrusted network. So it's not about 
making your network secure. It's about sending securely over an unsecure uh, network. Uh, and there are definitely something like Curve and these uh, designed for embedded uh, encryption is very, very interesting. And message flow actually doesn't care about the the, the, the payload that you send between, because we, we, we have a sli slight preference for JSON, but you can send buffers of arbitrary stuff. So that means you can, you, you can do this without changing any of the code. You do. So. Okay, uh, let's take other questions outside. Yes. Thanks a lot for the presentation and yeah. a big hand.